Good afternoon. Uh, we are very sorry for some technical glitches which generally happens with man and machine. Uh, the year was 1665 and uh, in England there was a huge break of uh, plague. It was a pandemic during that time. Especially during that time, uh, it was he was not known to be sir, but Isaac Newton came up with the foremost theories of physics in terms of gravitational energy, momentum, and what we call Newtonian mechanics. In the same time, during uh, when the pandemic was going on in England, uh, uh, Shakespeare came up with great novels, especially King Lear, Macbeth, and Antony and Cleopatra, which became the epitome of literature in the world history. Uh, considering those two facts, we find out evidence from history that uh, pandemic has never stopped in terms of intellectual, cognitive and scientific thinking. Taking a note on that, we have with us somebody whose grit and determination has helped to reconstruct many young lives, whose collaborative and systematic effort has also helped to integrate e-learning process. Somebody who joined uh, Usha Martin in the year 2010, 10, moved to Bangalore in 2012, and now she is the principal of one of the foremost international schools in Calcutta. Mm. We have with us the principal of James Academy International, uh, Mr. Aditi Mukherjee. Uh, Mr. Aditi, a very warm welcome from Asian College of Teachers, and uh, we welcome you to this uh, show uh, arranged by Asian College. So as we were talking a little bit, a glance about the history that pandemic has never thought, never stopped in terms of cognitive and scientific thinking. Uh, your thoughts, please. Yes, sure. Uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome back. Uh, it was a tough time. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me, Shonak? Yes. Yes. So. Um, Yes, as you said, the pandemic or anything cannot stop the human brains from working because thankfully there is no pandemic in the brain. And uh, but to think that a pandemic has caused the, uh, you know, uh, some people to write great drama and uh, Newton to have discovered something is an understatement. However, we would, yes, definitely agree with you uh, that um, not only a pandemic, but nothing can stop learning from happening. Nothing can stop the human brains from working. Yes, you're right. Yeah, so um, uh, I'm um, uh, the uh, entire pandemic which has broke up. We were never prepared, and this is the possibly we are witnessing a history. So, uh, uh, what do you think that uh, this this change in terms of the mental shift, which uh, education and everything, business, finance, education, logistics, every one of us has suffered uh, what do you think that uh, what is how education is reshaping up uh, with this covid which is still ongoing in uh, some uh, in, in all over the world uh, what do you think would be the shift in terms of uh, education your views please uh Shana, uh first and foremost let me like let me tell you that the shift was uh, because of the pandemic fine but these things that we are shifting with the tools that we are using to shift existed. It is only that we did not know that they are there. True. It is only after the pandemic that we came to know of something so important like a Zoom meet, for instance. But did Zoom, uh, dis was it discovered on the day the pandemic was uh, declared? No, we had these things. We only woke up and we realized that these things can be used for something so traditional and something so unique and something so, uh, you know, should I say it, it, it cannot stop. And therefore, we tried and we tried to understand what are the tools and what are the means and what are the methodologies that we will pick up to continue education. Education right. definitely cannot stop. We cannot stop food. We cannot stop shelter. We cannot stop breathing. And so cannot we stop education. The shift happened in the methodology. It did not happen in the fact that these things were, uh, you know, it, it, it got discovered or invented. Therefore, the offline task, which was a majority of the people followed the offline task or, you know, the non-virtual mode, it was teaching and learning, which was physical presence. And now this has shifted to more of a virtual mode where we are more into the online mode. However, technology existed. And schools like ours, we always use technology as a very, very powerful tool to drive home points to our children. 
Right. So uh, what I think you are telling that what we generally know that necessity is the mother of invention. So it was already there. And this pandemic created an uh, atmosphere where these things came right in the forefront. So uh, taking a note on that, I would like to ask you that, as you said, that this already existed and the situation demanded that. So how do you think, like as far as Jim's, Jim's Academy is concerned, the assessment in terms of the knowledge of the students, like we generally, when we go out into the classroom and check the assessments, it is in a different mode, we know the body language, we can see different things that the, uh, you know, the students are doing. So how do you find that the challenge or I would say uh, overcoming the challenge in terms of online technology, checking on the methods, the ways students now come to you and they behave. So how do you think it is helping or how do you think it is uh, creating a new way of innovation? See, there was the disruption zone first, right? We were confused as to what shall we do? We knew that as teachers, we cannot stop our children from learning. We cannot stop classes. We cannot stop education. What will the child do if he is not taught at home? It will become, you know, a, a, a parallel pandemic if children are not educated. So that disruption zone was created and we all put our minds together and we realized that there has to be a growth zone. We have to take up certain things and we have to continue doing what we are doing. So if children cannot come to school, the very obvious thing is that the school goes to children. And therefore, these online modes were created. And a wonderful thing in the growth zone happened is that everybody got together. For instance, my IT team, my administration team, my teachers, we leaders, everybody got together to find out a structured way of presenting to our children that, look, we are there. Look, you're not alone. You may be at home, but classes do happen. And you know, Shana, this was a very critical time. It was on the 16th of March that we had to call off examinations and ch ask children to go home. We are a boarding school. We had to almost pack them up and send them to different parts of the country and to the different parts of the, of the, of the uh, even of the world. We have children from Bangladesh. We have children from other parts of the world. So that was not from that time onwards till today, which is, you know, half June is over. We are in a very, very structured mode, continuing classes. Yes. And I'm proud to say that all the teachers, when it was time for them to have the session break, you know, just relax that, oh, one year is over and now five days of rest is the time when they started working 24 seven because the modules were different, the methodology was different the uh, you know resources were different so and the only drive that we as teachers had is that a child should not think oh my teacher doesn't know and therefore she's not being able to reach me we are telling children that you are you are furthering the universe to the better to a better place how can we not hold their hands how can we not you know give them what we need to give them and therefore this online teaching was happening but as you said, assessments, yes, of course, we cannot live without assessments. Assessments can happen in any which way. So now it is very, we are very happy to tell you that more than testing, it's collaborating, it's creating. So what are we doing when we are in an online class? We are trying to restructure this entire system that there is a monologue where the teacher will speak. There's another monologue that the child will answer. And there's another counter monologue or a feedback monologue that the teacher will give. We have we have to break that, and we have broken that. So it is more of you know as as we say that when I am uh, you are taking the help of your IT when you are seeing that you know the uh, sound system is not working. So every child has a, a, a particular capacity. So when everybody is on the same page, including the teacher, imagine what kind of creative genius is being created in that particular frame. You know, where the teacher is failing, the child is saying, where I am entering a class and I'm, ma'am, your voice is breaking, do this, do that. And therefore, we are all learning simultaneously. So assessments, yes, they will happen, but they can still wait. So in one way, uh, what we are telling is that uh, technological innovation, advancement in terms of module making, et cetera, are being done. Uh, do you think that we are really losing the human touch, which was there in the classroom? 
want more than the human touch when i am telling a child in a sociology class countered by a geography class countered by a science class to talk of the migrant laborers problems what more human touch when i'm telling a child that child you are not coming to school but you're sitting in your ac room and you're doing a class whereas there are thousands and thousands of people in the rural villages who in spite of their intentions are not being able to uh, you know afford this human touch is not only physical presence shonak human touch is here it's here so what we try to do in our classes is we we sensitize children to understand how important human touch is see i will give you a very small example and you will understand one day i was doing my class in my school okay so immediately when children saw me they saying ma'am are you in school are you in your office i said yes child i am in my office ma'am show us our ground show us our classroom you know that yeah, this can also yeah. go away from them has made them realize how important it is for them so unless you understand you know the you won't understand the value of water unless the well is dry so maybe we are all understanding what a comfortable life we were all leading yeah without the darkness the light won't shine you won't understand the importance of light Absolutely. asian college of yeah asian college of teachers for about a decade we are into online education we are developing new modules even after this pandemic we as you know that you came to our campus i and you recruited few of our candidates so we always try to bring that kind of a campus connect which we are doing right now so we are developing this type of modules uh, which will reach out in this Uh, difficult times to people so uh, with that like we have launched mce and other courses which is reaching out to people purely online courses along with that what you told the human touch where they are counseling people are reaching out correcting their problems so what do you think that this online education is lacking uh, as far as india is concerned and what are the measures that we need to take see the the bandwidth is a real problem i i shiver to think what happens to children in the remote villages shonak see we have a scholarship scheme where we have children from the remote parts of jharkhand bihar and you know uh, if you see if you see their interests in joining the classes you will be you will be so happy but i i i i would like to feel that you know that not all children are as lucky they are they do not get the scholarships they do not have access to online classes whereas you know they would be maybe uh, you know uh, uh, if they would have got they would have uh, arranged so that is one big problem where uh, as teachers we 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 do not feel this as a right thing however the second thing as a teacher we feel is yes of course the emotional connect or the physical connect i i still feel that my teachers say ma'am when a child is upset you know generally we go to go in front of the child and we see that he's not eating food and we say oh come i will have food with you come on to come to the canteen let me see what you have got so you know that physical connect and we cannot ignore or we cannot deny the fact that all families are not a uh, perfect families we understand that there are a lot of problems which children are facing because they are at home and uh, yes so the list is huge but whatever we can we can and we must so uh, uh, this actually brings us to a, a common question which i think like uh, as far as the online teaching is concerned now that we are preferring different kind of modules we are trying to kind of get, get a kind of a human and online touch with those people uh, with the students so the assessments are also changing because we we might find that they are more objective driven rather than subjective and elaborative answers which automatically comes in terms of online test do you think that a, a child or a student's uh, knowledge in terms of objective teaching will is going to suffer if we continue with this online teaching for about four or five years because they won't be uh, learning they might be learning but their answering more will be more of very precise so the uh, span of the knowledge uh, do you think that it is going to suffer or is it going to be the same see uh, when you are saying that we are not being able to do subjective assessment you are considering three, three facts you are considering that the child is dishonest and will cheat you are considering that the child will have different technology in front of us uh, in front of him and he will counter effort or a child will have a discussion mode now here is where we have to break the norm 
what is an assessment an assessment is what you know what we have discussed what we have collaborated what we have created it is gone are the days when you say the you know which year did uh, you know albert einstein discover mcq or whatever he did uh, e is equal to mc square i should not make a mistake i'm a teacher so <laughs> here is where we need to rethink on the system of assessment i will give you a small example again back to maybe okay the very fact that biology this is this is a pandemic that no one has a hands on let us believe that no one has a hands on this it is natural and it is biological all right how many things can you cover out of this you can ask children about uh, you know how this pandemic occurred you can ask children about how it can be combated you can ask this is science what about uh, what about um, history you can ask children like you introduced what was it that you know the last pandemic created how good was it how bad was it how did people bounce back dance you can tell children okay you are frustrated at home you are at home you are following the you know physical distance policy and so on and so forth so create something so that you can come up with your uh, you know you can vent out your uh, frustration or you can vent out to the fact that you are um, at home sociology geography everything can be assessed now that there are so many things happening around us so there is no dearth of assessment it does not have to be an mcq it does not have to be you can and what is that it is interpretation it is creation it is validation it is uh, you know analysis it does not have to be what have you have learned it can also be it should also be what you have understood what you have interpreted so that is what and this is a high time that we realize as teachers that no longer can we have questions on what happened and who did and uh, how did it happen and when did it happen we have to go beyond this so what you are telling that considering the current situation that we are all undergoing assessment based on the current situation is much more valid is much more apt if we, if we take those things into into account so and there is uh, no correct you, answer if you are taking it from today there is no correct answer you can say that uh, you know ma'am there is a country that has caused the pandemic i can say that it was nature and uh, somebody else can say no it was uh, something else okay so True. there is no correct answer so we are in such a beautiful volatile uh, space that everything that we say is right absolutely there is no wrong answer absolutely so uh, if we take on that but we do have a, a like a, a point coming up uh, at uh, considering the new methods that we are designing given lesson plans etc uh how can we reach out to the practical training part like uh, those things because you are into this field you know like uh, when people really make things in their hand and show it so do you have a solution on that of course there is a solution shonak there are there are simulations there are virtual labs where the planning the execution the only thing that you cannot do in a simulation is you cannot touch or maybe you cannot smell so that is a technician's part that can happen any time later but the entire fact of a of a virtual lab simulation is very much possible online and there are hundreds and hundreds of mail that a uh, principal is probably getting to uh, you know uh, for us to take up and just move forward okay okay so um, yeah that is a, that is thank you for like enlightening us that's a wonderful why but uh, uh, do you think that uh, students like we know that who are uh, cognitive and non cognitive students if we consider that even 10% of the total uh, students that we are catering to are non cognitive so in case that they are not learning in the usual way that we do so in that case what is the way like how do you uh, suggest uh, to us or those Our you are saying cognitive are, as in as in uh, people who uh, who are uh, scientists or who are thinking from the brains. Yeah, is it? Yeah, those so who are it, not thinking. You, yeah. So would you the say that a dancer is a non-cognitive uh, person, uh, or a singer uh, is a non-cognitive person? Not in that way, but <laughs> yes. So here again, the concept, the idea that uh, you know that academics is. cognitive and non cognitive that there is a extra curricular a co curricular and a classroom should break and it is breaking again i repeat the multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary aspects of facets of education is so important now 
so will you tell me ma'am did you you asked me about cognitive did you ask me ma'am is biology still relevant in today's world is english still relevant you know because uh, you know, maybe tomorrow my child will be in china and he should learn chinese more than he should learn uh, english but we are okay with the subjects that we are teaching but we think that those who play those who sing those who dance are non brainers they're not so when i am talking of a topic in a in a in a geography class in a sociology class suppose i'm talking of migrant laborers and their problems right sure. a good writer a good person who writes a, a, an english child or a hindi child or a bengali child will write a letter to the prime minister of the country explaining how this is a problem yes a, 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 a science child will realize what is the body fatigue that a, that a person walking thousands of miles will face a dancer will say and will create something on 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 the migrant laborers uh, problem and a singer will will create a song so the topic remains but the ways that a teacher is teaching is again interdisciplinary and collaborative learning that is what we are trying to understand now at this point of time that please do not compartmentalize human beings cannot compartmentalize their brains in a way that we think that they can true we have got an interesting question uh, which is coming up from Trisha Mitra, uh, if you um, uh, please, uh, should we compare and differentiate online or virtual learning from a physical classroom training? If yes, then what should be the lines of demarcation? Your views, madam. Should we compare and differentiate? Compare? Uh, I don't know what you mean by a compare and a differentiation. Yes, there is a difference. Definitely, there is a difference where. Uh, a teacher is not being able to reach out to a person more so i'm sorry when a person is not at his best emotionally socially or mentally yes on an on screen you can give me a facade you can give me a smile and at the back you are definitely you know you are suffering but as a teacher in the 15 years of experience or 20 years of experience that i have i can look into the into the face of a child in a classroom and understand that you know this child has not eaten in the morning however i may not be able to do that in a half an hour of class that i am allotted why is that because in in other classes say a teacher is a teacher in the whole period of 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 a school a schooling time right from 8 o'clock till 3 o'clock i am seeing my child at different phases so i tell you shonak you know i saw anirban today he was he is so fond of football he did not go to play football okay you tell me ma'am i saw this i did not see him during lunch time and we all get together and find out anirban what happened to you come here child are you sick this cannot happen in an online class true, yes that is the human touch that is only missing in an online class many other things can be done thank you thank you very much for your explanation uh, i would like to uh, uh, you know i i think that we have got another question if you can quickly take it somebody called sukanya mukherjee uh, uh, i think she is she has got a question how are the children copying up are they missing the school ambience and the practical lessons so how it is ma'am you're trying to keep it up i think you already answered you can oh just yes add. they are missing uh, they are missing us and please we are missing them we are missing them too we want to see them we want to uh, you know we want to see them right in front of us thank you for answering uh, there is another question which has come up uh, neha somani uh, uh, shivanjan we'll take uh, quickly this question uh, shivanjan i think she he's a part so yes, he's telling i'm a part yes yes yeah, and i'm glad to see how the school is tackling the situation in the covid 19 my question is online education helps to reach out to the students with the modules of leader uh, but education also includes equipping the students with soft skill such as leadership coordination resilience true that's true in fact those skills wonderful are more important question. yeah so you view wonderful please. question shivanjan uh, you have really grown up to be a smart boy yes so uh, shonak i would just like to take a small example of uh, shivanjan's question and tell you we have investiture all right we select our captains house captains games captains discipline heads etc on uh, sometimes in the month of june sometimes in the month of uh, may yes now what we we could not have uh, and it is such beautiful experience so we could not have these interviews that we have we could not have the voting we could not have these things so what did we do we had three layers of interviews so we selected a few children and we told them give us a two minute video on why you think you should be selected 
or as the leader of a school that is not running as it was running for the last 10 years. Yes. So the responsibility of that particular leader, because he will not be. ने चले ग टेकिंगेशन टेकिंग पार्ट Uh, into the current pandemic situation as madam has been rightly pointed out that pandemic or any kind of a natural catastrophe actually leads us to more learning so uh, as she has told that zoom or skype it was not that it was not there it was there but we are making it to more applicable and this application comes with the mother of necessity that is the mother of invention so taking forward from this we will be talking more on uh, the uh, current situation we are trying to get hold of few of the questions and answers i think that would be really more because we are learning from a lot of a lot of questions questions asked from different part of the world different students who are have been into gems academy or students who have been with asian college of teachers and i think that it is quite a good learning so the uh, the assessment and the methodology process is changing it is continuously changing it is changed along with the uh, pandemic which has happened and i think that gems academy has got its plan for placement as well as new manpower recruitment we are sorry for this uh, uh, problem the technical glitches that is happening so it happens with man and machine as usual and we will be shortly coming up uh, i have spoken to ma'am and she is trying to connect as soon as possible we have got some good questions also coming up i would really hold them on queue like rachi rachita pati mishra who has got a question that what would you suggest a new teacher uh, in brief and how would suggest and cop up we have got aditi ma'am now connected uh, we are happy to get you back yes ma'am so we can continue with the question what you were answering 
uh, we are selecting our leaders in that way. And I think, uh, you know, if not the total, uh, if you are not getting 100% of the leadership uh, ideologies that we can, uh, you know, uh, think of, we are at least getting 75% of it. Right. We have got a question from uh, that. That's wonderful. I think that was a wonderful question. I think we have got a question from uh, Rachita Pati Mishra. Uh, good afternoon, madam. What one thing would you suggest a new teacher or an inspiring teacher with a smiley? How to cope up with the current situation? Uh, perspective of, from a new teacher's point of view. Your views, please. See, uh, you have to first strive, and only then you can thrive. Okay, so uh, uh, this is uh, this is for all of us. As a teacher, you have to just remember that we are the ones who prepare children for the future. So I cannot bask in the glory of my past and say, oh, I have been teaching 15 years in a class and I have a child who's gone to NASA and I have a child who's a country topper and bask in the glory. Today, when I enter the classroom and if children say, ma'am, you haven't switched on your video, ma'am, we cannot do this, ma'am, you cannot do that. And I cannot take an online class, uh, you know, par excellence and I'm not learning it, then I'm failing. So teachers can't fail. We have to have the face that we know it all and we must know it all. So that is what you have to do. So if you do not strive, you cannot thrive. So please do your homework well. We have, uh, thank you, thank you for answering that. We have another quick question because we will be running short of it. Quickly uh, take some question. Kuhurina Basu, what were the roadblocks that you and faculty faced, madam, in the course of this transition? How did you overcome this? I think it is a very pertinent question. Your views, please. Yes. See, I will, I will tell you one incident. Well, in the first uh, week when we entered, we had a lot of meetings, online meetings. And then we realized that, you know, children were, uh, children were uh, smarter than us. You know, they were, uh, they were not switching on their uh, uh, videos. They were trying and talking. They were doing all the nonsense that was possible, which uh, we were not being able to manage. See, in a classroom, an experienced teacher knows, okay, you are not listening, you are not talking, you are doing this and you are doing that. The same thing is also for online classes, okay? While you are taking and you are putting your heart out, me, you know, a, a, a poor old teacher, the child is blissfully chatting with another one in another uh, phone, yes? And the second hitch that of, was obviously, ma'am, my net is not working, so I'm not being able to talk. Why did you go out and come back? Oh, my net is not working. Shana, the same logic I would tell everyone. If a teacher is interesting, it the child will absolutely uh, be absolutely. glued. So when you're watching a Netflix, if you don't get internet, what will you do? You will go to every corner of your room, right? To get internet somewhere. Why not that in your classroom? So we have to do that kind of a class where the child will say, Miss Kalia, yaar, I need to do that class. What happened? What did Miss do today? Difficult, but not impossible. Thank you. Wonderful views. Uh, what? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I would uh, like to ask you one thing, like uh, considering all those situations, because you, uh, as James Academy and Asian College, we are uh, re related in terms of like power. We, we are working together. So, uh, what, what yes, and I must thank you for the good teachers you've given me. I must thank you for the good teachers that you've given me. And what is your feedback, ma'am? How are they doing? Like, any views, any suggestions? From your side, do they have a or, choice? Shana, either in Asian College or in Gems Academia, do they have a choice of not doing well? <laughs> they don't have. <laughs> well, so obviously you. they're doing them. Yeah, and uh, I'd like well. to ask. Sure, like what are the plans? Because there will be dearth of teachers. We will be going on with things. So, what do you think would be the uh, plans in terms of placement? Like, what what are your plans in terms of recruitment? Uh, see, a teacher, again, as I said, is the face of the world today. Only when you're falling sick are you going to the doctor. Only when you're breaking rules are you going to the police. But you can't but help come to me. You have to, you know. So we have to learn, unlearn, relearn. That is, that, is, that is the catch. So a teacher who is equipped to do that, a teacher who has had a training to do that, a teacher who has mastery of 
the subject that he is or she is teaching is definitely a teacher we would like to recruit and of course you know we have people like you who are doing making our work easier yeah taking that on point on the concern uh, ACT Asian college we have uh, launched a program called VOLT just to let people and might be also for you that is called virtual online teaching it is a diploma which can be learned in the online mode of learning and so the teachers are ready uh, a very important part of this is change the program that addresses the current post process and the education sector and it also focuses most importantly on mobile learning so we are trying from our point of view to take hold of everything so uh, what i would like finally what i would like to uh, uh, tell uh, ask you on a very uh, important note is that you have been uh, i would say an anchor in uh, in the area of uh, teaching uh, when the storm has raged uh, when the storm has raged you have served as an anchor what are your views uh, for the future upcoming teacher who are taking things forward listening to you learning from you what are your tips and for techniques or any kind of teaching which you would like to give to the future teachers who are coming up uh, Shauna, before I, I consider myself as an anchor, let me tell you that a principal or an anchor is only as good as his team. If the ship has a hole, no matter how smart the anchor is, you know, there is uh, there is always seepage and there is sinking. Second True. is the pandemic has slowed down our lives, but it has augmented change. If you see every single day, there is a change in every single aspect of life. So a teacher cannot resist change so you have to be a person where a teacher is now uh, you know before there was there was this idea that oh this poor teacher she has joined teaching because she wanted a vacation oh poor teacher her husband doesn't allow her to do something else doesn't go uh, allow her to go at night somewhere you know in a corporate world and she had a lot of brains but she's still you know a teacher poor teacher earning poor things no longer will this be after the pandemic is over you know, we know and we are rightfully going to claim that the best in the industry should come for teaching. Right. So from our part, we are uh, going uh, close to the end of this session uh, from Asian College of Teachers. Uh, our uh, sincere gratitude, sincere thanks to you, uh, Madam, for joining, uh, sending, uh, spending uh, time with us. I know there has been some technical glitches, audience might uh, have gone through that, but thank you for giving the inputs. I think few points which I would like to point upon what we have learned clearly. Point number one, as you have really pointed out, that the best in the industry is going to come up. It is not that teaching is just an option that my husband was not allowing or I was not getting the corporate kind of a pressure. So teaching, number one, is when I was going not to very good in studies. I did not. I was not very good in studies, so I could have become a scientist, but okay, I'm now teaching. So that's right. not what so, yeah. so the take number one is that the best in the industry is going to come up. Second is that we are not losing human touch. We are getting more close to human touch because everything is now getting close to the learning with all possible options that we can reach out to people as you have rightly told that people or the students are missing their grounds, their classroom and their dear teachers. Third point is that considering what the current pandemic situation, which is prevailing that all the subjects needs to be revamped and all the subjects can be learned on a better fashion, considering the current situation and taking examples from here. So uh, thank you very much for joining with us. We had Aditi Mukherjee from um, uh, the principal of James Academy International talking to us. Asian College has been always trying to connect with the campus. Today, we cannot go to the campus. Campus is out there, as Madam has rightly pointed, that when the students are not coming to the campus, the school is going to the campus. So Asian College today has tried to reach out, directly going to the virtual campus, directly connecting to Ms. Mukherjee, who is there as a principal, and she has really enlightened us. This pandemic has created options for a better learning. This is Sean Bhattacharya signing off from Asian College of Teachers, wishing you, a, wishing you all a very happy stay. Stay safe and bye bye from now. Goodbye. Goodbye, madam. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, madam.